So let's get into what probably most of you are most <laughs> most interested in and management as far as it. And it boils down to simply control the plaque. If you can control the plaque in the cat's teeth, they aren't going to have as many teeth <laughs> issues. But getting your cat to brush its teeth, <laughs> haven't been able to train any of mine to do it yet. Um, some people can brush their cat's teeth, it's not a problem. Most cats, not really willing to sit there and let you brush their teeth. Um, some people can get just those, the, the gauze 4x4s four and just kind of rubbing their tooth. Um, they make little finger toothbrushes too that you can get in there. And I mean, it's something that if you start early with a kitten, it's conceivable that you could train them to be okay with having their teeth brushed. Um, but usually it's starting early and having the follow through of doing it, you know, on a regular basis and getting your buyers of your kittens to continue it as well. So compliance is a real issue. Um, and some cats, it doesn't matter how early you start, you're never going to get them to be okay with it. Dental hygiene rinses. There are several out there, several numerous ones out there. Um, we have the water additives, the Oxyfresh, um, Aquadent are just a few. I know there are several of them out there. There are mouth rinses. There is Novasan rinses that you can just rinse their mouth out with. Um, chlorhexidine rinses. Biotin is one. Um, again, there's a multitude out there. Sometimes they're difficult to use because again, your cats may not appreciate yeah. having stuff, you know, flushed in their mouth. Um, I personally have cats that are sensitive to pretty much all of those. I have one that caused, it caused him to have seizures, and I have one that causes him to have horrible, horrible diarrhea. And it's, I'm definitely the exception to the rule because it's not, it doesn't seem like many other people have this problem, but for whatever reason, mine do. So. I'm not able to use those. And again, it's it's a little difficult for some people to actually actually use them and uh, on a regular basis and a consist consistent basis. Um, we have lovely dental diets that are out there now, which is great. Um, and a lot of just the regular commercial diets too have changed the way in which they make cat kibble. So you have Royal Canine that has the larger kibble for the main Coons and have looked at the different ways that the different breeds of cats actually chew their food and prehend their food and that sort of thing and have tried to manipulate their food to better fit those particular breeds of cats. Um, they have feline greenies, uh, CET makes a dental treat for cats as well and again all this is doing is it allows them to bite down and the shearing action of that food across the, the tooth surface helps scrape that plaque off and scrape that biofilm off. And that's simply just another way to control the plaque. Um, again, getting your cats to eat them. Some cats really like them. Some cats couldn't care less and don't really care to eat them. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a crapshoot, unfortunately. Um, but the fact that they're out there and we have these options now for cats is great because five years ago we didn't even have these options so it's it's worth that we have some uh really routine dental scaling and polishing is your best bet again it's the only way you're going to get tartar build up on your cat's teeth off is to have them taken into the vet and have an actual dental cleaning done just like you and i probably get at least once a year if not twice a year um, to just help get all that plaque off the tooth and also to get the plaque that's subgingival. It's up in, under the gum line where you can't get it for normal brushing and, and the dental treats and things like that. Um, so that is a good way to control um, the mouth inflammation and everything on your... I, I know it would be it, expensive for all your kittens to do that, but something to encourage your buyers um, to do is routine Dental, dental checks with your veterinarian and um, kind of nip nip anything that starts out early in the bud and kind of get the teeth cleaned up at an early age and help control hopefully some of the inflammation so it doesn't get worse down the line. 
Um, as far as juvenile hyperplastic gingivitis, it's something that you can you can take them and do the dental scaling polishing, and it can help. Um, usually, these guys tend to resolve around puberty, so around depending on the breed, you know, nine months to a year and a half, roughly. Some of them don't. Some of them they always have the the red gums and the and the whole lot of gum tissue. Um, Resection can actually take care of that. So when you take them in for the, the routine dental cleaning and everything, they can actually remove that gingiva that's on the surface down to where it's just close to what it would normally be on the surface of the mouth. Uh, laser, laser ablation seems to work very well if you have a veterinarian that has access to a, a carbon dioxide laser. It just goes in and removes all that hyperplastic tissue because all that tissue is doing is creating more areas for all that plaque to go because it's covering the surface of the tooth where it can't get brushed off and can't get removed by normal means. So Does it grow back though? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Oh. Um, with the juvenile, like I said, sometimes when they hit about puberty, it just goes away. And you don't have you don't really have any problem with it anymore. Some of them don't. Some of them go on to develop the chronic stomatitis and things like that. Um, but if you can get it taken care of in an early age, the earlier the better, because you're not going to have the buildup of all the plaque and everything like that on the teeth that are going to cause problems down the road. So, um, stomatitis. Really, the best way to try and knock this out is to have the dental cleaning have them chart their teeth and do radiographs so you can tell you know what's going on underneath the gum so you can look at the roots and see do they have root resorption do they have you know tooth root abscesses things like that going on because you really you don't necessarily know what's going on underneath the gum line just by looking at their teeth they could have horrible horrible you know crowns and everything like that but the roots are fine or you can have you know perfect crowns and everything else but you've got no roots and abscess here and an abscess here and and all sorts of things so dental radiography is really a good line of defense so you know what you're dealing with really um, and also removing the plaque and sometimes just removing that plaque subgingivally is enough that the immune system can go oh okay I, I recognize this now for what it is and I'm not going to jump overboard as far as the immune response. And sometimes that's kind of the end of it. If you get you know, yearly dental cleanings, it sometimes takes care of it and it's well controlled. Um, you put them on antimicrobials as well. And usually this is, the, these are done in combination. Um, but I've had good luck. Uh, clindamycin, clavamox, they're very broad spectrum. Uh, clindamycin is really good for um, <coughs> bone, if there's bone involvement in the jaw, um, that sort of thing, Osteo, osteomyelitis, that sort of thing, inflammation or infection in the bones. Clindamycin is a good choice. It actually absorbs into the bone area. You get better uh, protection from that. Clavamox, very, very wide spectrum. Metronidazole takes care of your, um, your anaerobic type and uh, bacteria. It also has an anti-inflammatory effect as well as does doxycycline. Doxycycline in and of itself is very anti-inflammatory as well as antimicrobial. So they're good. Um, doxycycline is the drug of choice if you're treating for Bartonella as well. Um, I have had the best luck with the azithromycin myself and it's coming up fairly as, as kind of the drug of choice for stomatitis um, just because it, it just seems to have a better effect and it kind of calms things down and my juvenile hyperplastic gingivite kitties, excuse me, I've put them on azithromycin and done it for about four weeks or you can do a pulsed therapy where you give it for a week and then you're off for two weeks and then you give it for a week or you're on a week, off a week, on a week, off a week and it seems to have helped significantly with my hyperplastic gingiva uh, kittens that I've had. So I've had good luck with it. It's what I recommend 
for any of my clients coming in um, to try that first um, before we get to the, the more extreme uh, treatments for it. Um, corticosteroids, I, I know a lot of people are very, 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 very hesitant to do corticosteroids in cats. Steroids in cats, and <laughs> you say that and people go, <gasps> but truly if it's used properly and in the right dose, it can be very effective. And where we run into the issues with developing diabetes and things like that are chronic, long-term administration of corticosteroids. If you do it, you know, once, if you're using Depamedrol, which is a long-acting steroid, you give them a shot one week, and maybe three weeks, four weeks later, give them another shot, it can really, it can really do them a lot of good. It can tampen down that inflammation and give them a lot of relief as far as the inflammation is concerned. And again, if used in the proper dose and not used for a long term, and we're talking, you know, months and months and months and months, you aren't going to have the issues with diabetes and things like that, that many people are afraid to use corticosteroids in cats. It's a very effective tool. Um, I do not hesitate to try corticosteroids in these chronic stomatitis kitties to try and give them some relief. And sometimes it's enough, it'll knock it out. You give them a steroid shot or some steroids in conjunction with the antibiotics and it'll knock it out and they won't have too many problems later on down the line. I think it's worth a try versus going to the extreme of pulling all the teeth. So I, I definitely think it's a good it's a good use, but I know a lot of people are very hesitant to use it in cats for fear of them developing diabetes and some of the other side effects that they can with long term use. Um, there are immunomodulators out there. Chlorambucil is not really used that much anymore. It's a chemotherapy jug, so and so is cyclosporin. Basically, they're going to knock down the immune system response. Um, Cyclosporin blocks the T helper cells, which are one of the main components in gum inflammation. Those T helper cells get in there, part of the neutrophils that um, cause some of the inflammation. Like I said, chlorambucil is not really used that much, but it's it's available. Should you know if you want to try it at some point. Um, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, um, meloxicam or medicam is the the newest one on the block, the new kid on the block. Um, it's fairly effective in cats. Um, it there have uh, does have some side effects in a few cats. I mean, definitely, it's not something you want to give to a, a dehydrated cat with chronic kidney disease. Um, but any non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, you don't really want to give to a, a cat, dehydrated cat in chronic kidney disease. But um, these again are going to knock down the. Uh, immune response and also gives some analgesia, so some pain control for these really painful, painful conditions. Um, Paroxicam is another one. It's, it's used mostly as a chemotherapy agent as well. Um, haven't used that, it that much in cats. Um, it's, not, it's not used really that much in cats at all, but it is out there and available. Azathioprine is again one that's out there, it's not used very much at all because it can cause a fatal toxicity in cats, um, but it, I mean kind of as a last resort to pulling the teeth, you could try it. I, I would go some other routes before I tried azathioprine on a cat myself, but it is one that's out there and is in the literature as far as treatment for stomatitis. Feline interferon. Um, it's, for the people who have used it, so they say it's great. Um, the literature says it's, it can give some cats some relief. The problem is it's really difficult to get in the US and it's horribly expensive, very, very expensive. You, you usually, you have to do a special dispensation to Europe to actually get this particular drug because it's not it's not available for use in the United States or it's not approved for use in the United States um, but it's really 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 expensive um, but basically the feline interferon it, it stimulates the immune system to do its job properly and helps 
clear out some of the inflammation so there's not quite such an exaggerated response. But the limiting factor is the fact that it's so expensive and difficult to get. So not very many people use it as a, as a, as a therapy, but it is available out there if you wanted to pursue it at some point. Um, some other things that have been tried and have had some good luck, bovine lactoferrin stimulates the immune system to act more appropriately against the plaque rather than the hyper exaggerated ex response. Um, I've tried that in a few of my cats. Some it helps, some it doesn't. It's kind of a hit or miss type thing. Um, Magestral acetate too, um, it's a hormone so it's going to affect the immune, re immune response as well. I really haven't used it that much. I haven't seen much literature as far as it being used and how effective it is. Uh, I can't ever say it. I could say it yesterday. Levamisol. Yeah, there we go. It's actually a, a bovine dewormer, oddly enough. Um, but it again also immune modulates the immune system. Again, not much study out there as far as how effective it is. It's just one that's in there in the literature to use should you so desire. Lysine. Uh, lysine is very effective at helping stem the herpes virus. And again, going back to the viral component, herpes virus may play a role in oral disease. So anything that can tamp down that uh, herpes virus response uh, is a good idea and lysine is really easy to give and fairly cheap. Um, a lot of, I know Royal Canin, their special diet has a higher uh, content of lysine in it than most commercial diets that are available. Um, so that's a good, an easy way to try something to see if it will help uh, your cats that have the chronic stomatitis. Um, and also fatty acids, again they modulate the immune system they uh, affect the eicosanoic acid, so you're uh, almost like your non anti-inflammatories take care of your COX-1 and your COX-2, which are various different immune responses. Um, it can help as well. There are several fatty acid supplements that are out there commercially available um, on the market for pets, or you can use just the kind that you get at Walgreens for yourself. Um, you can use those. Also, changing to stainless steel or glass bowls, um, feline chin acne, they think might have a play a role. It might help with chronic stomatitis as well if you don't feed from plastic because um, it harbors the bacteria. Um, so, those type of things are are all possibilities to try uh, for the chronic stomatitis.